Hello everyone, I'm Aaron, a birding naturalist. Welcome to my channel. Today I am on Staten Island again. Now about a year ago I did a video from here on Staten Island in Central California in the Delta and I focused on Sandhill Crane. And <clears throat> the reason I did that was because Staten Island is owned and managed by the Nature Conservancy as a preserve basically for cranes. They created it and, and maintain it for crane habitat uh, for cranes to come in the winter time to come and forage here and roost here and it gives them lots of food and varying water depths and just sort of this, just the right conditions that they need one of the interesting things about staten island though and about managing for sandhill cranes is that you also manage for a lot of other species there are plenty of other species that benefit from and use habitat that is very similar to sandhill crane habitat and I really want to focus on one of those species today in this video, and that is a species called the cackling goose. Cackling geese look a lot like the Canada goose that we're probably all familiar with. The black neck with the sort of white chin strap, brown body, looks a lot, a lot like a Canada goose. But it's way smaller. Cackling geese are about maybe half the size of your common run-of-the-mill Canada goose. And they're really interesting birds. For a long time, they were thought to be a subspecies of Canada goose, but recent genetic and behavioral data suggests that they are, in fact, good, true species in their own right. So I'm not sure if you can see behind me here, but actually out in the field here, there's a flock of cackling geese. Cute little things. They breed way, way up on the northern edge of the North American continent. So Alaska, right up on the edge of the Arctic Ocean, uh, Bering Strait, the Aleutian Islands, and then also um, along the northern edge of Canada. From there, they migrate south along the Pacific states, so Washington, Oregon, California, and also down through the center of the lower 48. And in particular, especially in those Pacific birds, Central California is a really important stopover. And that's one of the reasons why we see so many of them here in the Central Delta in Central California. These birds have some really interesting behavior. So not only are they sort of these miniaturized, sort of pint-sized Canada geese, which makes them kind of fun in their own right, um, but they also have some fascinating behaviors. One is that Cackling geese actually mate for life. So a male and a female will pair up and they stay paired until one of them dies. When they have young, when the babies hatch up on the northern tundra, the babies stay with their parents as they mature and they all migrate south and they spend the winter together. So here you will see flocks made up of family groups that have all sort of glumped together to hang out together for the winter. But those family groups stick together. The young stay with their parents. And in fact, on spring migration, as those birds go back up north to the Arctic tundra, those family groups stay together again. And in fact, the cackling geese young often don't breed until their second or third year. And so they'll hang out with their parents for a long time. So it's a really unusual dynamic for waterfowl and really for birds is to have these sort of family groups stick together for so long and so tightly. Since a Canada goose and a cackling goose do look quite similar in a lot of ways, I want to take a moment to talk about the differences between them. How do you tell that you're looking at a cackling goose and not a Canada goose? So for one thing, half the size. They are so much smaller that that really is a good indicator. I mean, it's especially dramatic if you happen to have a cackling goose standing next to a Canada goose. The difference is, is pretty pronounced. 
When you have a group of cackling geese by themselves, though, sometimes it's not totally obvious. You don't have any kind of frame of reference. How big is that bird? Um, so, a couple of other useful field marks is, one, the bill. The bill on a cackling goose is much slimmer and much shorter in comparison to the head than a Canada goose is. Canada geese have these big, big bills um, sticking out the front of their faces. And cackling geese have these really small, little sort of diminutive little bills. Another one, and this isn't 100%, but it's pretty common, is that at the base of the black on the neck of a cackling goose, there's actually a little band of white, kind of highlights that transition between the black of the neck and the sort of gray-brown of the body. There's this band of white. Now, some cackling geese don't have this, but it's something you really never see on a Canada goose. So if you see that white band at the base of the neck, think cackling goose, absolutely. So two really useful field marks along with the size. So there's a size, that's one, but the two really useful field marks, even if you don't have any kind of size comparison at all, are the really small bill in comparison to the head size, head size and that white trim at the bottom of the black. A few notes on Staten Island. So it's owned and managed by the Nature Conservancy, largely for sandhill cranes, as I mentioned, <clears throat> but also for other species of waterfowl and even other species of bird. There are raptors that benefit from being here. There are lots of songbirds uh, that also definitely benefit from having this habitat here. If you want to visit, and I strongly encourage you to come on down and visit, Staten Island Road is a long road that runs mostly north-south, right down the middle of the island. The island itself is private property, or it's managed by the Nature Conservancy, so it's not open to the public. But the road itself absolutely is. And so you can drive down this road. It's paved for a part, and it's gravel and sort of dirt for a part, but it's all open to the public, the road itself. And you can just drive down and look out either side of the road for flooded fields or fields that have been plowed under and watch for where the geese or the cranes or whatever birds you're interested in are congregating and just stop, pull over on the side of the road and watch. The best time to do this is in the winter. That's really when numbers here uh, are, are spectacular. So November, December, January, February, those are the months when Staten Island is just great, great birding. And as far as time of day, evening is one of the most spectacular times to come here. The birds often leave the island to forage elsewhere, but then they come back to the island to rest and spend the night. And so if you can get here half an hour before sundown, you can start seeing these birds fly in, sometimes big, big flocks closing and swinging in from the surrounding areas and congregating, concentrating their numbers here on this one island. It's a spectacular, spectacular view. Um, and so a real, real treat if you can, if you can swing it. So by all means, you know, pick an evening in those winter months and come on out to Staten Island and enjoy the amazing show. I'm gonna try to get some more footage. Until next time, enjoy the natural world.